conference on human capital development uh, in Africa. It's a, a series of conferences that we plan to organize every year and mainly focusing on human capital uh, development, obviously, from year to year. This is the second one. We organized the first one a few years ago. That's actually before COVID. And due to COVID, this, uh, it was not able to uh, continue, but we wanted to reinstate and continue this conference because it's, we believe it's very timely. And in fact, the idea is to create a sustainable platform for a long period of time that we do annually with partners um, from the government, from um, you know, partners like GAZ and iCapital, ATD now is on board as an association. This uh, conference uh, from different years uh, comes up with different thematic areas. And this year the theme is uh, towards um, building a uh, self-sustaining ecosystem, mainly focusing on the future of jobs, and employability and skills development. You know, these are the three key issues that ATD intends to address. And that's how the discussion um, happened. iCapital, uh, it's a private consulting firm. It's iCapital Africa Institute. And uh, it's um, a consulting and capacity building, we say. And it's in, we call it, it's in the business of transforming people, mainly focusing on human capital development. ATD is Association for Talent Development in Ethiopia. This is not a global ATD. It's a Ethiopia uh, part of Association for Talent Development in Ethiopia. Mainly, uh, it's a non, a civic, you can call it as a civic society organization that is registered uh, in Ethiopia and uh, it has members, uh, it has a board, and I'm a board um, chairman. GZ is the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, which is the German technical agency for technical cooperation under the German Development Corporation. STEP, the Sustainable Training and Education Program, is commissioned by the um, German government and the European delegation in Ethiopia to support the Ministry of Labour and Skills um, with regards to the employability and employment of young Ethiopians in the TVET and in the Universities of Applied Science uh, section. The Sustainable Training and Education Programme STEP has the objective to increase the employability of young Ethiopians. Now, this is both happening in the TVET sector but also in the area of uh, universities of applied sciences. We are doing this by promoting collaboration between private sector and public sector, both um, with TVETs and TVET colleges, but also with universities. We believe that um, a good education system, a good technical education system, needs the cooperation between private sector and public sector. Both actors need to play a role in that field uh, to make a complete and holistic and um, highly functioning um, education system. We are supporting um, the Ministry of Labour and Skills and the other stakeholders in different ways. On the one hand, we have been supporting extensive capacity development programs, um, both at TVETs and universities. We are also um, supporting curriculum development, we're supporting the cooperation between public and private sector, um, but we are also directly going into um, cooperative training, collaborative training forms. This conference is one aspect of our work as well. We have been um, partnering with the Association for Talent Development and with the iCapital Institute in the, for this conference because they bring in expertise that we ourselves don't have. And that's one of the key aspects that um, we do in our cooperation. Um, so far, uh, we, we are, you know, um, having partnership with many um, national and international organizations to, you know, develop the, the, the skill and talents of uh, young people in Ethiopia. Uh, actually, uh, we have uh, uh, so many partners, including GIZ and other uh, uh, international organizations. Uh, 
in, with support of uh, these uh, partners, we are doing, you know, uh, the uh, dialogue forums I have already mentioned before, and also we are uh, engaging these partners on the reform agendas, including the curriculum reforms and the teachers development and also the uh, public-private uh, partnership uh, activities. In terms of uh, youth development and the skill development, um, the government is uh, steering the whole um, process, uh, uh, including the private sector and also other uh, civil organizations. Uh, currently, uh, we, we are creating different platforms, uh, including the sector skill councils and also the private-public uh, partnership and dialogue forums where different stakeholders, including uh, the private sector, the government and other stakeholders are coming together uh, to talk about their um, agendas and uh, common interest. So uh, nowadays the government, especially our ministry, is uh, steering uh, the whole you know, ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, with the support of these uh, partners. Uh, we are learning from experience of Europe, experience of Asia and Africa even. So uh, we are doing great these days, yeah. In terms of the objectives of the conference, the second one, I believe in our assessment, it went uh, very well and it was uh, successful in many ways because it was able to bring different uh, partners on board. GIZ is a partner, um, ATD, Association for Talent Development in Ethiopia is a partner, iCapital Africa Institute is a partner, uh, particularly, uh, most importantly, the government through the Ministry of Labor's um, and uh, skills uh, is a partner of the conference. Generally, the, like uh, it was stated in the theme, and the whole discussion was around creating self-sustaining and demand-driven skill ecosystem. I think that's the first time this issue has been discussed, as far as I can remember. And from that perspective, focusing on the three issues, employability, like I said, uh, future of jobs, and skill development, um, through the participation of the private sector, the supplier side actors from universities, the TVET institutions, ecosystem from development partners, associations, and, and the government side. This has been um, you know, instrumental in many issues were raised. Recommendations came, came out as a um, takeaway, um, point of actions, and the commitment from the government itself through the Ministry of uh, Labor and Skill was very clear and uh, the ministry said then these are the key issues that we will act upon uh, and we like to the the, the, go the government one likes to, part to continue partnership even not only in the form of the conference but also in terms of taking concrete actions towards creating this uh, self-sustaining ecosystem in Ethiopia and I believe it went very successful. Just uh, as a university, uh, we are facing, particularly Ethiopian University, Applied Science University, are facing a lot of challenge in terms of skill development. For instance, say, uh, lack of structure in sensitive mechanism for industries to, to uh, take initiative for skill development is one of the challenges we are facing currently, and we are communicating with the government and the different NGOs in terms of uh, uh, this structure, uh, incentive mechanism to provide experts and you know, to industry. That's a major uh, challenge. That's why the industry is reluctant to accept the uh, graduate student for internship and ex externship too. That the first thing is a very uh, important issue is that uh, we don't have a very structured incentive mechanism to industries and experts uh, to facilitate, to strengthen this skill development uh, of our graduate student. Uh, secondly, uh, very limited awareness uh, between industries and uh, uh, public institutions. See, uh, uh, 
the pub, particularly the industries in the company, are not happy to uh, take students for training, particularly internship, and you know that's uh, uh, a lack of awareness uh, between the two uh, institutions. Uh, the, the, the way how the private institutions are contributing for the development of the, the, the country is one question, but still there is a gap between the the. the the, uh, the awareness gap between the public and the private institution, that's a major case as this, this third series, we don't have a very structured guideline for in, in, in universities, industry linking. But the government is right now is uh, come up with a new kind of initiative, how to industry work with the uh, uh, public institution, particularly Tibet and the now university. Some of the challenges we face as a, in the private sector are when you find the right talent, that talent may not have the right soft skills. For example, within Gabea, one of the things that we have a hard time with is uh, we match tech talents to clients. And usually tech talents tend to be, um, they work by, by themselves. They, they like to be very focused, have their headphones on. That communication aspect of, of uh, um, employee and uh, employer relation is not really there so we have to work on making sure they have the right soft skills to be matched with uh, whether it's tech jobs or, or, or other jobs that they might be looking into. Uh, the, the conference is very interesting. Uh, uh, I want to mention a very important two serious uh, uh, issues that I got from the, the conference. The first thing, I've got you know, many international experience from the, the conference because many uh, scholars and experts they came from industry and the academic institution and they share their experience to the audience, particularly with applied science, as, as applied science university uh, top officials and executive. I have got, you know, uh, senior and say, but uh, advanced um, experience from the expert and you know a senior researchers and uh, 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 owner of the industry and you know company. That's one thing. The second serious uh, advantage that I got from the the uh, conference is you know networking. I've got many uh, uh, networking, and that also. Uh, provide me a better opportunity to work with those industry as out within and out of the country. So networking is another serious concern that I have. The way uh, creating strong collaboration with private company industry is another thing. And also we see international experience, having the external international experience is uh, the, uh, the other advantage and you know Strong networking with industries, public and private institutions, is another serious concern that I have from the conference. The conference was great to say the least. My team and I from Gabea managed to network with a lot of individuals. It has a lot of uh, key stakeholders being a part of this having government uh, government entities, uh, ministers here also gave us an opportunity to speak about some of the challenges that we face within the private sector. So I think overall it's been such a wonderful experience and having experts come from the United States, Germany and other countries has been also very enlightening because we could share knowledge. Um, some of the things we struggle with with a lot of these conferences is that uh, you have the same people talking about the same things and there's no diversity in the knowledge that you're getting but um, getting experiences from Pakistan, from the US, from uh, Germany has given us an opportunity to see that other countries can do it too, uh, Kenya, some, some of our neighboring countries as well so I think it, it was a fantastic uh, conference overall. Some key takeaways from this conference. Uh, first of all, let me put my Gabaya hat on. Uh, as Gabaya, we're able to walk away from this conference knowing that there are 
uh, plenty of opportunities for young talents out there, whether it be in Germany or any other country, neighboring countries for African talents to be uh, outsourced and, and matched to clients. Um, as a, a person that attended this event, uh, my key takeaway is that uh, we often talk about policies and change we want to make and strategies, all of these things, but we don't really take it to the ground and actually implement it. So um, as a leader, uh, as an executive within Gabea, one of the things I plan to do is uh, think slightly different about how we approach upskilling, skills development, that human capital aspect of things. How can we grow the uh, talent that we have, our employees, as an organization that starts within, within your own organization. If you want to implement change, you need to first do it yourself. Then you're leading by example. So uh, I'll, I'll be able to walk away from this saying that, you know, I'm going to uh, have the right tools and knowledge in place to lead by example. I want to mention three uh, takeaway for uh, from this. One, the policy framework for public-private partnership, a very important thing. Still, we didn't have such a thing. Now we want to work on that issue again. And secondly, structured incentive mechanism for industries. And by the way, uh, as a university, I'm working on that because I, I suffer a lot by sending student, graduate student, to different company in the industry. Uh, lastly, it's better to think out of the, the, the box. We need to start thinking about kids' skill development, particularly our early childhood state. If we are not start today, running one step ahead and working on kids, always one of, one of uh, the GIZ experts, uh, the morning session says, I was here with the same agenda in 2018. We are talking the same agenda right now. Now it's better to think out of the box right now, particularly we need to work on the kids' education and the no skill development. Other private sectors, I wish there was more of them here today. Um, I would say being part of such conferences, uh, dialogues, this public-private partnership like uh, dialogues is really important. So I encourage them to uh, go out there and actually be a part of such conversations to learn more, gain more knowledge, and then take that on and implement it within their existing programs or businesses. There are takeaways our ways that came out of, or, or points for actions that came out as a summary of the conference. Particularly, ATD takes the responsibility of following up on some of the um, action points. And from that perspective, we put together the summary, and in the form of proceedings, you call it, uh, policy recommendation, you can call it, or takeaways, you can call it. We will put that together and then share it with participants and key uh, our partners, GIZ, um, malls, uh, and others also, even participants from, from many organizations. We share it for their actions and insight. That's what one thing that ATD is going to do. <clears throat> and the other thing is when uh, we also notice that there is a need for uh, policy intervention. That is one of the, the points. And then how can ATD bring uh, all actors together and advocate for a policy that can help Ethiopia create self-sustaining and demand-driven ecosystem? I think that is another assignment for ATD to take uh, it further until the policy becomes a reality. It doesn't mean Ethiopia does not have a policy. Ethiopia has a policy. But the thing is there is always a dynamism that is happening and I don't believe the existing policy looked at you know the situation from self-sustaining and demand-driven ecosystem perspective so what we are pushing for is for a policy that accommodates this this perspective of the ecosystem and that is another another uh, domain for ATD and further we look at the possibility of ATD becoming a key actor in the domain of certifying not only members but also in certain areas uh, for non-members as well. For, for example, if you take uh, one of the learnings is if you take uh, the traditional educational system, including the TVET, uh, provides a cert in a certain pathway for and leads to certain certification or recognition. That is one thing. But there are many other opportunities and possibilities where you know skills can be developed. 
and how does uh, can can ATD play a role in recognizing those uh, skill development activities and also how can it involve in accreditation uh, mechanisms in partnership with the government. That's another takeaway. And also the importance of networking and collaboration is al already highlighted and as a missing aspect of the ecosystem. So what we like to do is be the platform for bringing you know, people together because that's why ATD is existing. From our ministry side, uh, this uh, particular uh, conference is actually very instrumental for us. Uh, as you know, Africa is a young uh, continent and also Ethiopia is the same. We, we have a young you know, uh, population. Uh, unless we develop uh, our young population with right skill and knowledge and attitude, uh, yeah, it's difficult to you know, realize the prosperity in the country. Because of that, uh, these kind of uh, conferences are uh, instrumental in uh, you know, forwarding different policy instruments, different policy ideas for further uh, reform in, in, in the sector. Uh, so, uh, at the end of this uh, workshop, we are expecting to have uh, many takeaways um, in terms of the governance, in terms of the curriculum reforms, and also in terms of the public-private partnership. Uh, currently, uh, the Ethiopian government has already endorsed a new education and training policy. Based on that education and training policy, we are currently doing strategy, which is emanated from that uh, policy. So. I think uh, we, we will get uh, some you know, concrete uh, policy advices and the policy ideas from this particular uh, workshop to, to, to enrich our you know, strategies in the Tibet sector. We hope that after this conference, the learnings out of this conference, the agreements between the different stakeholders will shape the way that the TVET, the technical and the university um, education is taking in the future here. We hope there will be agreements between private sector and public sector and other actors on how education should look like in the coming years and how um, the better education system then can contribute to the stability and the growth of the Ethiopian country.